Welcome everybody to Discover Ignite podcast episode four. I am your host, Marcus. And in this episode, we are talking about rest of your life starts today. But for those people out there wondering about episode three, episode three is actually the video format, if you are looking for that, is on Discover Possibility series with Sean Gorham. I am actually bringing in a lot of the Discover Possibility series into the podcast to kind of change things up a little bit, just so you guys are aware. If you guys are looking for the video format of episode three on the audio version, there is an audio version of it, but it is the video format is the interview I did with Sean Gorham. So let's go ahead and get right into episode four. Again, we're talking about the rest of your life starts today. And what really brought this up this week was I was debating what I was going to do for my Ignite Thursdays, which for those people out there who don't know, I do have an Ignite Thursday every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Instagram. It was previously on YouTube and Facebook, but I have since moved it to Instagram. And in in coming up with a theme, I, I was going with the whole idea of, you know, having a negative environment and, and being grateful. And in just talking about that, I want to talk, hit on that briefly before I get into this. But, you know, having a negative environment, you have to realize that being grateful and having a negative environment aren't the same things. Yes, you should be grateful for those things that come into your life, but you should also not be oblivious to the fact that your environment is a toxic environment. If you feel like you can't strive in this environment, if you feel like there is no growth, if you know you are not enjoying it, but you're doing it for your particular belief set that you currently have, you have to realize that and separate the two. Yes, you should be grateful for those things that come into your life, but you should also not tolerate things that are not allowing you to prosper and grow in your life. You should eliminate those things that are essentially draining your energy and not allowing you to proceed in life. And so with that being said, that was the the theme that I wanted to bring into Thursday. And then I, for those people who don't know, I'm also on, I'm on TikTok. Yes, I'm I'm on pretty much every platform, but uh, I've, I've been on TikTok and I've been posting some videos on there. And I had this one particular comment, which I talked about on my live uh, on Thursday night. And it essentially was just, the thought, the idea, right? The person, I don't want to essentially reiterate what they said, although it wasn't horrible, but uh, just for purposes of this podcast, I don't want to reiterate what he said. But nonetheless, he essentially disagreed and couldn't really believe that people would believe the words that are coming out of my mouth. And and in doing that, that's why I kind of changed the theme on Thursday. And it's because of the fact that you have to understand that I, I too have been there. I too have, have thought that, you know, a lot of the stuff was, wasn't agreeable. And that's because, because I had a lack of perspective. I had a lack of experience. And I don't know if this commenter was, had a lack of experience or, or where they were in their life, but nonetheless, it's, have you really put forth the effort to understand if it is possible? Now, I'm not just saying you did it one, two, three times. You did it for a week. You did it for 60 days and didn't work. And this is why I talk about unseen progress all the time, because a lot of times you'll start doing these things and you'll say they just don't work because you have to realize you've, again, conditioned yourself to believe a lot of the things you have now. And then you find yourself where you don't know who you are anymore. And so... It's easy to challenge other thoughts and ideas, which I totally agree. You should always challenge new thoughts and ideas. That's something you should always do. But in saying that, uh, coming at this, it, he was very close-minded. He or she, I don't know what who uh, the gender of whoever it was. But um, in saying that, right, you should always come at things with an open mindset, no matter what it is, no matter if a belief wants to make you think that it is not true, you should still have an open mind. Try to learn something from it as opposed to just rejecting the thought or the idea right off the bat. Because typically when we do that, it is because of the conditions and beliefs that we have that we'll reject an idea before it's even uh, 
fully fully developed or, or communicated to us, right? And so, in saying that, that all I could think about in that comment was, you know, where are they coming from? And I talked about this a little bit on Thursday, but you know, I try to reverse engineer negative thoughts and ideas. And also leads into another live that I, I was I attended this week, uh, where a friend of mine was talking about uh, how she believed that the positive thoughts and ideas or uh, if she gets uh, good feedback, it's hard for her to accept that, but it's easier to accept negative feedback. And I'm, the, I'm very much the same way, right? Like even when I get promotions and everything, I'm like, that's that's great, right? Like I, I, I don't see it as being not normal for me, right? And so for me to accept something, it's, it's hard for me. It's something I work on, right? It's not like I've, 100% mastered all these things. I have a lot of things that have really helped me and really improved my life. And I share those tools with you guys. And, and some things I've, I've done tremendous, I've made tremendous strides in, in my life. And that's what I share are those things that I have uh, put into practice. And if I haven't put it into practice, I don't share those things. And so in saying that, going back to this, uh, the negative the negative feedback right is something i always look at more because i try to correct and i know it's it's not something that you you probably should do but i know i've talked about it as well you shouldn't ever see things as a positive and a negative you should just see see things as they are and and so that is essentially my whole thought process is I do lean towards more of the negative stuff and then try to dissect it more to see how I could improve it and build it up. I guess is, that is ultimately what I'm getting for, towards because the fact that, you know, the positive side, it's like, okay, well, that just emphasizes my strengths and that, that's great. I don't, I don't want to be emphasized on my strengths. I want to know what my weaknesses are. How can I fix them? And, and look at particular things that I could do to to perhaps grow that. And so that's what I ultimately try to do when I'm, I'm looking at negative feedback and I uh, implore more negative feedback as opposed to the positive. I do appreciate the positive uh, comments and everything. So don't say that I'm, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that not to leave them. I do appreciate all of them. Uh, it's, it is good to see positive and make sure that I am helping people make change in their life. So I'm not saying that ultimately, but what I'm saying is that for myself to help develop myself, I look for the negative. Um, I do appreciate the positive feedback that you guys do uh, provide me. So I do appreciate that very much. Uh, being said, so going back to this comment, I was trying to reverse engineer the way he was thinking. And then I was, I started going more towards, you know, it's the fixed versus growth mindset. And what kind of mindset do you have? Now, the, the difference being essentially is a uh, fixed mindset is you think that you are essentially born uh, with your intelligence, right? You don't have to go out and learn anything. Either you get it or you don't. And then with well, the growth mindset is something, the growth mindset is something that has been coined by Dr. Carol Dweck. Uh, she's phenomenal. If you haven't seen her book, it's uh, The Mindset by Carol Dweck. It's a fantastic book. But she talks about the growth mindset and that uh, people with a growth mindset, you know, they are the people that are out there that realize that you have to fail to progress in life, to grow, to get better and realize that it's possible, that it's just a matter of time and to implore this mindset as opposed to that fix where a fixed person will try to essentially um, call it that they, they have the track record, right? You have a past. And if, if, if you can't visualize yourself doing it and in, in your past experiences, you failed, then you see yourself that you won't even attempt a particular problem because you assume that you're just going to fail. And so with a growth mindset, you realize that even though you don't know it now and it's not part of your history, that it's still possible that you can learn. And, you know, you go through your, your past, you've done this. You don't just come out the womb and able to walk or talk. All these things are learned. We are not fixed. We have a growth mindset. And when you do get older, it's just a little bit harder to change stuff because you have to realize that you are rewiring your brain. And again, this 
it goes back to a lot of stuff I talk about, about the conditioning of your brain to this point, but it's not saying that you can't recondition your, your brain. And that's why I teach mindset optimization and perspective because your brain needs to be reconditioned. It needs to be rewired, um, bringing your mind essentially to the gym. Just like you would physically, you have to do it mentally. If you're not doing it every single day, it's you're not going to see that you can change your mindset. You're not going to see that a growth mindset is possible. All you're going to see is a, a fixated uh, traits that you have that can't be fixed. Now, given because I've also received comments about, well, you know, if I have a learning disability, okay, I, I give that to an extent, right? But it depends really what it is. For me. See, back when I was little, I could have been diagnosed with ADHD, right? I was, uh, my, my brain was always active when I was younger. And I thought it was a learning disability. They essentially it, uh, labeled it as a learning disability. But I didn't see it that way. I saw it as my brain was just active. I didn't know what to call it, but I didn't think I had a learning disability. And when I got older, I started to realize that I think it was around, it was just before I got in high school. I started just applying myself and realizing, okay, well, if this is such a big deal, why am I even taking this class or having to take this extra class? And so I just started applying myself and realizing, well, I guess I should, you know, give some focus where it needs to be. And I realized that by doing that, it just, it fixed everything. Like even the teacher I had for, uh, for that particular class, I don't even recall what it was called, but she was like, I don't even know why you're here. Like you can go out, you're perfectly normal. I don't understand why you're even taking this anymore. And so that's just it is, you know, you have to realize that you have a growth mindset. You've, you're wired up to this point. And yes, like I said, when you get older, it's a little bit harder, but it is still possible. You can always rewire your brain. It just requires you go to your mental gym every single day and put forth effort because you're not going to get yoked <laughs> by not going to the gym. Although there is uh, scientific evidence that if you do actually visualize yourself, which is something I don't, I, I've talked about briefly, but if you do actually visualize yourself doing things, you can actually increase uh, your, your strength by, I think it's like 30%, 35%, somewhere in that range, uh, by just mentally rehearsing that thing because your brain doesn't know the difference and it starts uh, sending chemicals to, uh, to those particular muscles and stuff that you're concentrating on. So it's, it's very phenomenal. And one thing uh, that I, again, try to teach is because the brain itself is so phenomenal in the way it works that if you realize it, it, it's such a powerful tool that we are still learning so much about it. Uh, and even all the studies and the psychologists and everything, they don't even know everything, right? A lot of stuff is in theory. And so it is putting it in practice, which is stuff I do and realize what stuff that works. And then I, again, relay it to you guys and stuff that I've been doing for over the years. And then again, like I've talked about, I've been really over the past uh, the cu past couple of years, I've really been like optimizing that. I've always been, uh, in the world of igniting change in my life. Uh, when I'm not satisfied anymore, when I uh, hit the glass ceiling, I've always changed. And it's always been that way. And I enjoy the change, I enjoy the challenge. And, and when I realize that pushing this way, you start to realize that it is a growth mindset that you are only give, have to give it time to be able to to grow and understand that and then have that be a uh, part of your life. And this is something uh, Dr. Uh, David Eagleman actually talks about a lot in his uh, recent book, uh, which I have a, a book review on my YouTube channel if you guys are interested, but it's uh, Livewire, I believe. And he talks about that. It's essentially whatever is in the forefront of your brain, whatever you are constantly, because essentially you gotta rewire it and then you gotta essentially lay that path. So if you think, if you can imagine yourself uh, walking through a field of wheat, right? If there's, say there's a normal path that everybody walks, so that whole, the whole path of wheat is essentially laid flat and it's easy to walk across. But this is the way your brain essentially is. You want to rewire your brain, so you're gonna make a left through the wheat. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be rough, right? Nothing is taken down. You have to walk through it. It's again gonna be rough. But the more you tread through that direction, you realize that the, the stocks start breaking down, the floor, the ground starts becoming more level, and then it's just an easier path. 
That's what you have to realize. This is what a growth mindset is, is it's growing it out this way is by continuously pushing through that path. And then you have before too long, you eventually have another smooth path. So not, not only do you have the regular path, but this is something also to remember. It's not just that old path will stay there forever. You do have to, it has to be relevant in your brain. Your brain is very, uh, likes to utilize the space. It's not, if you ever get any kind of, if you particularly lose a limb or anything like that, your brain just doesn't go dead. It uses that, it rewires that part of the brain that no longer is functioning for whatever that function was. It will rewire it to whatever it needs. And so, and this is why a lot of people, they, you know, they get uh, heightened other senses and stuff because of the fact that it's rewiring, it's taking over that, that part of the brain that's not being used. It's not, again, like the, the brain goes dead. So we have to realize that the, the growth mindset is there and trying to lay new paths, right? Running through the wheat field, what way are you going to go? What new path are you generating? And realize that you're going to have to continually push down that path to allow yourself to to, to lay the foundation. And then when you get there, again, that the journey is much easier. But again, whatever you are uh, consuming, right, and allowing to, to hold in your thoughts, that is what is going to uh, always essentially be at the forefront and allow you to be uh, very fluid in whatever it is, whatever you're wanting to learn. Say you're trying to learn about um, just, just changing your mindset. Like what I, what I teach in, in learning about tools and breathing techniques and learning about stillness and all these things are hard because you're going against resistance and you realize that you're going against the wheat, right? You're going against the stocks. You're trying to push and plow through that and then lay that path. So you have to realize that when you're doing that, that's what's happening in your brain, right? That's, that's, it's a visual for you guys to help you guys out. Um, but being said, and so going to that comment, it's, it's, you've got to have a growth mindset. You've got to come into things with, uh, again, an empty glass. Again, you might know stuff, but instead of thinking, I know this, why don't you think, well, what can, what new about this can I learn? Always approach it through a new perspective. If you have a new perspective, then it is much easier uh, to approach things and not just blow things off. Because a lot of times we'll blow things off. I and mean, you may learn that even though this path is, you, you kind of already know this path. Maybe you realize that it's uh, it's a lot easier to go down that path with perhaps a moped, right? Or something like that, right? There's easier ways. You have to understand that. And so that's some, a new perspective you need to always come into as again, being uh, a growth mindset. And in and, and saying that, um, the rest of your life starts today. So we're coming back to the rest of your life starts today. And this... We have to realize that when you are going with the growth mindset in that your past does not define who you are today and your future, uh, again, your mind tries to pre predict what's going to happen in the future. So we have to realize that the rest of your life starts today. You are not, again, defined by your past. You are creating in constant creation today. And so in saying that, you at any moment can change your life today by the decisions you make today. And so, again, this relates to what is your relationship with time? Are you finding that you're still stuck in the past about who you were? Are you still talking about the jock that you were in, in high school? Are you still talking about when you used to run marathons? Are you still talking about uh, when you used to be uh, something? If you find yourself doing this, what you need to do is that that is not who you are today. And a lot of times we want to get to a point where we're like, okay, when I reach this point, I will be good. I will be satisfied. But you realize when you get to that point, you you are not satisfied. You Yes, you reached that goal, and that's tremendous, and that's great. And I'm not trying to downplay people's goals and ideas. I think you should always have ideas. You should always be growing into something new and progressing. And this is not changing who you are. This is improving who you are. Because at the end of it, right, at the end of all of this, you know, when life comes to a screeching halt and we don't know when that is, you want to be able to say, you know, this comes into the whole thing with, sorry, not to sidetrack, but I wanted to set this up a little bit, is that um, Les Brown talked about this, about meeting your optimal self. 
if you can meet your optimal self, what would that look like? And at the end of my life, I want to be that person. I don't want to be like, well, look, uh, I could have been this, but this is who I was because I didn't realize that today marks the rest of my life, that I am in constant creation, that I am creating who I am today and creating that person that I want to be, the optimal self, whatever that looks like. And that requires a consistent growth, consistent education, consistent pushing yourself against resistance, creating those new paths. And it's not saying that, you know, you can start one way, you can start down a path and realize that, hey, this path isn't for me, and you can change it. There's nothing wrong with that. But you should start creating new paths and realizing that you are not stuck where you're at, realizing you're not your past, realizing that you can make change no matter how old you are. Uh, I've made a lot of dramatic changes from a young age. I've steered my ship many different directions. And even now, I continue to steer my ship. I continue to grow. The more perspective I get, I seek more perspective. And I, that's why I teach you guys to seek more perspective, read books, go through experiences, do the most, the best that you can and get out of that fixed mindset and realize that the rest of your life starts today. The rest of your life is dictated by what you do today. Now, if you're fine with what you're doing today, if you have no complaints, then you're fine. I'm not here telling you you have to go do these things. I think we should always try to improve ourselves in some way, shape, or form to improve our lives. Because if we're not, I think if we're not in, in constant growth, you know, this is where anxiety, depression, and all these things come in. Because you think you would be satisfied when you get to that point. You get to that point, and you realize that is not as exciting as you thought it would be. You think there would be some aha moment when you get there that would be like, this is it, I'm done. But there's not. You have to continue to grow. You have to continue to seek things that will help you be happy. And when you seek those things that, you know, I talk about help you lose sense of time and self, you realize that this is what's going to make you happy. But the other thing to understand here too, not only do you want to lose time and self, but you want to put risk on the table. This means going out, out of your comfort zone and, and doing something that would put risk on the table, whether that's money, whether that's money to join a group or something like that, or to learn something new, or to go on lives, or to do something like that, or go out with other people and socialize, and realize that this piece is helps with that the ignition as a whole to be happy. Yes, you can do a bunch of little things and I think they get they give you like uh, small spurts of, of gratification, right? You get that explosive uh, great feeling, but it is only a temporary feeling. This is why motivation and all these things they only last for so long because it is is just a dopamine hit is what it is. But what you need to do is in, in being in constant creation, realizing you're in constant creation, realizing that going around other people, right? And you, I, even I'm an introvert, right? And you have to understand that going around other people gives you energy. You're ec ecstatic. And it, again, I, I talk about how, you know, energy, your energy does come from, you know, what you eat, uh, how well you're rested in your exercise, but it also comes from within and being around others and sharing similar thoughts and ideas. And even though it's nice to recharge and be by yourself, you have to realize that you have to be out. When you're more out and about uh, with like-minded people on those things that are that draw your interest in, you realize that this is where you're happy. The longer you can stay here and learning new perspectives and stuff and finding those groups that are along with like-minded people, you start becoming a lot happier. This is why they call it the pursuit of happiness, because you are pursuing happiness. And again, it all create, it's all created today. 
because if it goes in the past, eventually it will be the past. I'm talking now and, uh, you know, this podcast is already in the past, a lot of this podcast. With that being said, you, you're in constant creation. And so you can change anything. You're not stuck anywhere. You can always change stuff. You can get up and walk right out if you want to. It's up to you. You have to want to do it. You have to ignite the change to want to do it. And the change can happen today. The rest of your world starts today. It is every day. You can wake up. This is why something I find, I've never been one to, you know, the new year's coming up. And I've never been one to really uh, create goals for the new year's or new year's resolutions. I've always, I've always kind of, not agreed with that because I've always lived in this mindset that the rest of your life can start today. You can start right this second. You can turn off this podcast, although please don't turn off the podcast <laughs> uh, and, and go out and do it and start doing it. So wait till after the podcast, get motivated to go out there and ignite that mindset. But you have to understand that it is, it all starts today. You can do it today. What's holding you back? Why are you waiting for a new year to start your, your resolutions when you can do it today? You do it right now. And always be aware that it, it can start at any moment. It takes the prep work and your mindset to realize being aware of, hey, I actually have control of where my life goes in this moment. I can change anything. I can change the fact that I'm not healthy anymore by the next thing I put in my mouth, by the next exercise that I do, by the next meditation that I do, I can improve my, my mental health. I am in control of all of that. If I am in a negative environment, I can control to change that. Will it be painful? Are all these things painful? Is there resistance on these things? Yes, of course, there's always resistance. Again, you are rewiring your brain. And you know your brain, doesn't like to be <laughs> rewired all the time, especially when you come to old age. But it's not saying that it's not impossible to do. It is possible to do. Your brain gets older. Your brain is designed to procreate, to live, procreate, and then die. That's what your brain is designed to do. But it's not saying that you can't recondition it to go after the things that you want in life. And, and get out of that fixed mindset and start realizing that you have to adopt the growth mindset and start putting in the work till you see the results, logging the unseen progress because it is hard to not see the progress, especially when you're talking about developing an ignite mindset. There's a lot that you don't realize until you decide to go back to old routines because you're not seeing progress, only to realize that even a couple of days later that you were making great progress. And that now you realize that, well, it's, I can't believe I just let that fall off. Where could I have been today if I would have just kept up with it? And so in saying that, you know, again, the rest of your life does start today. It starts every day, it starts every second, every minute. You can make a change that can change your life forever. You're not stuck anywhere. If you feel like you're not smart, all it takes is for you to pick up a book and you can change your life. Pick up an audio book if you don't want to actually read. Watch a YouTube video that is educational. Go out and, and pick up a course or a class. Do something to change it. And the more you do it, the more you'll gain confidence in yourself. And you realize that all I need is a growth mindset and I can change it. I can change a lot of things in my life. Again, there's limitations on physical things like your height, right? You can't just go change. Um, today, I'm going to be six foot 10 and go join the NBA. And that's going to be the rest of my life. Yeah, you can't do that. But, uh, but mentally, your brain is the strongest tool you have in your life. And it begins and ends with a mindset and it begins and ends with this moment. 
So if you're fine where you're at, that's great. I'm not saying you have to change anything. I said, it would be good to improve your life. Everybody wants improvement in their life in some way, shape or form, whichever way that looks for you. Some people want more dramatic change. Some people just want little changes. But to have that Ignite mindset, you still have to realize that you need a growth mindset. You still have to realize that it is possible. Once you realize that it's possible, then you can do it. And then you're not fixed that you're stuck in whatever situation that you are in. And don't be afraid. And realize that the uncertainty is the resistance. The uncertainty is your brain, your brain's past experiences trying to predict what will happen, but it hasn't actually happened. Resistance is where your growth is, the growth mindset. And the reason there's resistance is because it's not wired that way yet. It's not wired that way yet. It is possible. You can do it. I've done it. I continue to do it. I continue to learn new perspectives. I continue to try to learn new experiences because it is possible and I've seen it. And I've, I've seen what perspective can do to a person because I've seen the changes it's made in myself. And I've, I've changed other people's lives because of that. You know, this reminds me, this is something else I haven't shared. And if you've made it this far to the end of this, this podcast or this even a uh, video version of this, uh, this is a story I haven't shared. Um, and it's actually, it, it kind of what led me into, I did briefly touch about when I was, when I started to go into college, I wanted to be a psychologist. I was doing computer programming and I thought about doing computer programming when I first went into college, but then I was, I had a particular moment in my life where I, I thought I really wanted to help people. I wanted to be a psychologist, but then I was told otherwise that it probably wasn't a good career field, but, but nonetheless, this particular moment is what really opened my eyes about, about people in having fixed and scarcity mindsets. And I remember this was back in, I want to say it was my senior year of high school. And for my friend, uh, I don't know if he watches my videos, he probably does not, but he was my best friend at the time. And just watching him over the, over the past, um, we were good friends, I think for like a year or two before that, this point, but we were really close. We did a lot of things together. We did a lot of programming and played a lot of video games and all that kind of stuff together. And so we were, we were really close. We, every essentially waking minute, a minute that we weren't, um, in school or, you know, sleeping or something like that. We were always together. It, it, it was play online together or we would be at each other's houses and just BSing, right? And so I remember he had his first girlfriend and I remember he was so in love with this girl and I would observe them and I, I realized that she she didn't care for him like he did for her. And this is typically for a lot of people. You may care more for that particular person and they don't, they're not as interested with you, right? It almost seems like they are uh, just in it just to be in it. And they're, they don't really have any desire to be in there. They're just biding their time. And that's what I was observing. Now, my friend, you know, he was so madly in love with her I didn't want, I, I couldn't, I wasn't in my heart to go just go tell him this stuff because I could be wrong. I mean, nothing is guaranteed. I could have been wrong, but it was what I was observing. And, and then looking at that, I remember she broke up with him and I don't recall how I got the call or whatever. Uh, at the time he had just got his license. So I think he actually, we went to go eat or something like that because we would always go grab something to eat and then we'd come back to the house or whatever. And, and and talk and do whatever we're gonna do break down computers doing hardware all kinds of stuff 
And so I remember sitting in his car and he started, he, he started getting really sad and he started talking about the breakup and everything and he just broke down. And at that point, from my observations and everything, I told him, I was like, I was like, bro, like you need to understand, like she is not the only person in the world. Like there's other people out there. You don't have to believe that this one person is, is your purpose. This one person is your everything because they're not. You have to realize that I come at it with a mind spec that the aspect that people come into your life for a reason. People come into your life on a temporary basis. How long that is, nobody knows. Again, this is where the whole uncertainty comes in is you don't know, but you have to be appreciative of the time that you have. And so I, I back then, I didn't know that, but what I told him was, you know, you have to realize that there's, there's other people out there and that she, again, is not the only one. You'll find somebody else. It's not the end of the world. And I think this is why finding your purpose is so important because if you place your purpose on a person, you place your purpose on a thing and that thing is gone from your life, you lose what you think your purpose is, is to satisfy that person when it's just not. Purpose is finding those things that you lose sense of time and self. And I, I told them, you know, don't think again, this is the end. And I remember talking to him about this whole situation and kind of give him that perspective and then seeing that it was okay. And it took him a while to digest, but it kind of gave him that perspective. Like, you know, that's right. She's not the only person. There's other people. And we were young. And I told him that we were, we're young. Like we're still in high school. We haven't even seen the real world yet. Like you have to understand how big the world is, how many people are in the world. And in saying that, you know, he, he had that perspective, he had that aha moment, but he, he still, he was still in pain. And I remember even after then it was, he was still in pain, but I you could tell he had that aha moment because it wasn't until years later, actually, it was actually decades later, I think, or a decade later, uh, he was a good friend I had, and again, when I was in high school, and then I hadn't touched base with him for like a decade. Again, I was I was traveling the world. I was in the military. I was doing all different other kinds of other things. I was starting a family, all these other different things. And I had touched base with him out of the blue. We touched base on Facebook, and I remember he was he was asking how everything was, and we were like catching up, right? Because that had been like a decade. And so we had a lot to catch up on. So I was, I was telling him what I was doing. Uh, I had just gotten into programming and, and my whole life going up to that point. And he, he was telling me about his, his life and about, about how he met somebody that he's getting, that he married. And he was so happy with this person. And then I was, I was so excited for him and, and just talking and, about everything that had been going on in our lives. And I was just so happy to see him find somebody that he was extremely happy with. And then I remember he, he said to me, he's like, thank you. Thank you for, for giving me that perspective. He's like, I was such a, I was such at a dark point in my life and you gave me perspective. And, and now I have a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful life. And now he has, you know, two kids now. And he has a beautiful wife and a beautiful life. And it's just coming from that, that scarcity mindset that it's not possible, coming from a fixed mindset that it can't be changed. But all you need is a little perspective and that can change your life and realize that you just have to keep moving. Things will get better. And you can change it by today, by living the rest of your life today. And so on that note, I want to leave you guys with that message is to realize that you are in constant creation and that any day, any moment, if you don't like it, change it, get over the uncertainty because it is much better on the other side. 
if you're not happy, especially in a environment that may be negative, yes, be grateful. Be grateful you have the choice to make the change that essentially is the rest of your life. Every single minute of every single day, you can change it by perspective, by mindset, by optimizing that stuff and allowing yourself to grow because that's ultimately where we're happy. So thank you guys and I will see you guys later.